You asked for it. Supercharged, third gen, long travel. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. <laughs> we brought it. Welcome back to another episode of Timmy the Toolman and Sean. And today we got Steven in the garage because we're trying to chase down a vacuum leak. So in today's episode, we're going to show you how to use an automotive smoke machine to track down some vacuum leaks and seal them up. So the code that Steven's plagued with is a P0171. And that is known to be a vacuum leak, traditionally. It can be some other leaks in the exhaust system. It can also point to a dirty mass airflow sensor, but we've swapped that out, we've cleaned that, we've inspected some other areas, and we don't see anything glaring. So we're gonna use the smoke machine and hopefully see one of the vacuum lines cracked, maybe letting out some air or something else in the intake system that's gonna lead us to the problem. If you've been following our channel for a little bit, you'll know we did a walk around video with Steve-O's rig here. It's supercharged, it's got a seventh injector, we got long travel. So if you wanna learn more about Steve-O's truck, click on the link above and you can watch that walk around video. But as you can notice, Steven is supercharged. So we got a supercharger on Steve-O's 5DZ FE engine. And so if you have a stock setup with stock plenums, this video is still gonna be helpful for you. So when it comes to a vacuum leak, it could be coming from the vacuum lines that are in and around your intake system. And over time with 20 year old vehicles, like third generation Toyota 4Runners, they can develop cracks, develop leaks, and then air can escape and then you have a vacuum leak, which can cause your truck to run rough. It can throw some codes like Steven's experiencing and also hesitation on throttle response. So if you're having some of these symptoms, you may have a vacuum leak and it's good to check. It's easy to check, and if it is a vacuum line, it's also easy to replace. So because Stevo has an air to fuel ratio sensor, because he's supercharged, he wants to monitor the AFRs on the system to make sure everything's in a safe range. He's also noticing that with that gauge, that he's getting some really weird readings. It's super rich, it's super lean, and that's also indicative of a vacuum leak. So we're gonna show you how to set up this automotive smoke machine, and then we're gonna start testing it and see if we have any leaks. Let's get started. So we got the smoke machine set up and the first instruction is to saturate the smoke coil, which essentially is filling up this container with the provided oil. If you ran out of oil or you wanna refill it, then you can fill it up with some generic mineral oil or baby oil and you can get that pretty easily at the store, pretty cheap. So essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna open up the top, drop in a marble that they include Fill it up with oil, fill the oil above the marble that you dropped in, close and lock the cover, install the hook if you wanna hang it up like we did. This unit has a connector that you're gonna connect and then ultimately you're going to connect the positive and negative lead to your battery so it has power. So then once you got everything hooked up, installed and ready to go, you're going to turn on the heat only switch. You're gonna heat it up for about three minutes. The instructions are kind of funny. One instruction says one minute, Later on in the pamphlet, it says three minutes, so we turn it on for three minutes. And then when you're ready to send the smoke through the system, you're going to flip the switch the other direction where it says heat aux. So first you prime it, you heat it up, and then you actually send the smoke through. So here's our setup. Stevo has this fancy air raid intake tube, just like I do on my rig. It's kind of nice. We disconnected the air box from the system. We don't want to go that way. We want to go towards the plenum, or in this case, towards the supercharger. And this intake tube actually has a nice port where we can send the smoke through. It comes with this barb as well. So we got this pretty well fitted in there and it's nice and snug. We cap this off with a glove, just something to make sure that smoke doesn't flow that way. And then the smoke's gonna start flowing through the system and the idea is that we're going to see smoke come out of the vacuum leak, wherever that may be. So we're gonna turn this on and see if we see any smoke coming out of the system. All right, connected to the battery. We're gonna heat it up for three minutes. All right, we're primed, three minutes has gone by and we're ready to send the smoke through the system. So let's flip the switch to the heat auxiliary or heat on, I guess. You can hear this particular model has a little pump. 
some model smoke machines, you probably are just going to have to hook it up to your air compressor or something like that. Looks like it's escaping a little bit out right here, but that's okay. We don't really suspect that. Aha. Now we see some smoke here. What do we got here? Oh, the seventh injector, where it plugs into the EGR, or replaces the EGR, I should say. It's smoking pretty heavily, good grief. Let's take a look here. Yep. That's definitely our problem. Look at how much smoke is coming out of there. Tons. So let's take that off. Take a look and see what's going on there. And just seal it up. So after removing the seventh injector from this port back here, which would typically house an EGR, we noticed there's no gasket. So we recently rebuilt Steven's supercharger and I guess we just didn't have a gasket or we lost it or it never had one. I don't know, but we're going to borrow this URD gasket that I got with my kit that was on my setup and we're going to put it in there and continue to test. We're going to do the smoke test again and see if smoke comes out in any other areas. And then ultimately we're going to do a test drive as well just to see if those pending codes go away, if the actual posted P0171 code goes away, and of course, if the check engine light goes away. We'll need to clear those, but they seem to come on pretty quickly right after driving. So we'll clear them, we'll do go for a test drive after we do the smoke test again, and hopefully this resolves the issue. Now, if you had a stock setup, you might notice some of these vacuum lines leaking either at their connection point or maybe there's like a small pinhole on them, who knows. You really don't know until you start sending smoke down the system and check for leaks. So we're gonna replace this and we'll be right back. All right, we replaced that gasket back there. We primed the smoke machine again. So it heated up for about three minutes. Now we're gonna flip the switch again. You can hear the motor pumping. We see the glove filling up, so we know we got some positive pressure. And let's try to identify some leaks here. You see any, Steve? -o? There's nothing there. Keep a keen eye, keep a keen eye. There's no smoke flowing out of where it was previously flowing out of. Yeah, it was flowing pretty heavy out of there. Eventually, we'll see probably a small, insignificant leak. What is that? Yeah, this is just getting pushed through this the glove. Residuals, yeah. Yeah, because it's just. The EGR is sealed. It's now. not that tight right here on the so on we the also glove. Need to figure out this part now. Where we have it plugged. Yeah, we got it plugged back here, so we didn't want to play around with that. Yeah, the smoke seems to be. Yeah. It's piling out of the glove right now. It's definitely coming out on the front. We don't really have a good, yeah, it's kind of a good seal, but I mean, it's not perfect, obviously. But the rest of the engine looks smoke-free, Yes. would you say? It does. We'll let it run for a little bit, see if we can notice anything else besides kind of like the main intake where this glove is. We don't see anything coming out over here. Now you can also hook up this barb to a specific line if you suspect that maybe a line has been compromised. And that's kind of your approach is you either suspect something specifically or you just do it generically through the entire system like we're doing. And again, this smoke that we see right now, it's just sneaking out through the glove. So we're not really worried about that. We're worried about once it gets in the system so I think we're good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shut this thing off. 
We're gonna take off the terminals. And we're gonna button this thing back up and take it for a test drive and see if it fixed the issue. So we're in the car, we're about to go on a test drive and Steven's gonna kind of explain a little bit about what you should see, what's normal on your AFR gauge. Yeah, so we're gonna be looking for around 14.7 around idle for the air fuel ratio. And then when we hit the gas, we wanna see these numbers drop down to show that it's getting more rich and we're putting gas into the system. So a healthy number would be in the low 12 range um, for the way that my truck is tuned. And uh, we really wanna see that number go down in the 12 range when I hit the gas. And what were you seeing before when we had this kind of like, when we had this vacuum leak situation? With the vacuum leak, it was really inconsistent air fuel ratios. So I was seeing the numbers stay in a higher range when I was wide open throttle, which is very unhealthy for the system. So that basically means that there's a lot of air in the system, more air than fuel. Not, not enough fuel, yeah. Okay. All right, let's start her up and we'll see what's going on. So before when you would start it up, what would you notice right here? Because right now it's about 14.7 like you said, so this looks normal, right? It was more sporadic. It wouldn't hold that that number as much. It was bouncing more. So it's dropping cool. down. Is that bad? It's dropping down a lot. It's getting a lot of gas right now at idle. It's pretty interesting. Um, well, you may have to relearn it. It's when you disconnect and reconnect the battery, right? There's parameters that it tries to relearn. So I don't know if it was trying to relearn when it had the vacuum leak. So it may take a tank of gas for it to um, fully get back to normal. Yeah. Some people say now it upon to uh, upon normal normal. driving here and we're on this test drive, are you going to be able to feel in your you know your engine response if it's uh, if it's changed since yeah. when you drove over here? Yeah, I'm really going to be looking for that hesitation on throttle with the throttle response. I, uh, before when I was hitting the gas, there would be a lag before you would feel the power. Okay. Well, let's go. Now you cleared the code right when you got here, right? Correct. So we are just kind of monitoring to see if the code comes back up during this test drive. is a high idle we are about 700 now which is pretty normal pretty typical for a regular idle on a forerunner and before you were a little over a thousand is that right it was just around a thousand basically a thousand so far so good we're happy yeah no check engine lights no pending codes it would have came on by now they were coming on so quick sweet Sick mods. All right, so we're back from our test drive and Steve-O gave it the beans on his supercharged 97. 
third gen Toyota 4Runner. And no pending trouble codes popped up. The air to fuel ratio gauge was actually giving us some good numbers. And so we're stoked because this seemed to fix the issue. And with that said, it's really crucial that you have the right tools for the job, whether that be an automotive smoke machine to test for vacuum leaks, or maybe that might be just a six inch extension because you can do a lot with six inches. But with that said, I think it's really important that you don't go throwing parts at your problems. And if you have a P0171 code with the check engine light, you probably want to start checking for vacuum leaks and an automotive smoke machine is the best way to do that. You can start replacing hoses and you can start replacing gaskets and it might fix the issue, but you might be chasing something that you really don't know what the issue is. So it's really nice to, to pinpoint. And that's what's really important about diagnosing the issue before you start addressing the issue. So we diagnosed the issue with the smoke machine. We saw that back EGR port on the supercharger, that gasket was torn, it wasn't working correctly, it wasn't sealing, and that's where we saw the smoke escape. So luckily, I also have a supercharger and I have an extra gasket. So I took it off, my setup, we slapped it on Steve-O's setup, and we fixed the issue. So let this be a lesson to you. You never know what it could be if you're supercharged or not. Moral of the story, get a supercharger because <laughs> it's really nice to have and it's fun. And it puts a new life into your truck. What else should we say? Uh, huge thank you to Sean for helping me diagnose and fix this issue as always. Love supporting the channel and love watching the new videos that come on there. And again, if you haven't seen Steve-O's uh, rig walk around, we have a video on that, so we'll link it in the video description and we also link to it in the beginning of the video. So thanks so much for tuning in. Take care, bye bye, and of course, sick mods. Sick mods. You wanna do that again? The sick mods. All right, part. yeah, let's do that. Actually, I jumped the gun. With all that said, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. If you have any questions or comments, do that below, especially if you have some experience with some vacuum leaks and you actually ended up fixing it in a different fashion. Maybe it was an exhaust leak, maybe it was your mass airflow sensor that was dirty. Whatever it is, drop your experience down below in the comments so we could help other people out there that may be stumbling across this video and wanna fix their issue. But of course, we're gonna end with our favorite word, sick mods. And we'll be back with some more sick mods in the future. Take care, bye bye. Pretty good. We got the whole crew out here today. Forerunners galore. Like the hole in my firewall was massive when Mello's cutting it out. Little tub action. I wonder how much. <laughs>